There we go. All right. Uh, so, of course, where we left off was with the chair. Uh, we made these legs, right? And we mirrored them. Now, remember, we have a progress check today. Remember, the way you do a progress check, and this is in other videos, right? Uh, but also, I do have it on the board, right? If you go to Window Menu, Save Screenshot, that will allow you to save a screenshot from Blender, right? I want to see screenshots. I don't want the Blender files, right? I'll accept the Blender files, but I want the screenshot. It's just easier to kind of do a quick assessment of it to see where you're at, right? So remember, Window, Save Screenshot, and it, it pops us up, and you can just save a screenshot to your desktop. It just it's saving a PNG. You could submit that. So remember, I want screenshots, right? Window, Save Screenshot. If you need to, you can always take a picture with your phone. That is acceptable as well. It's just that I have to download the Blender file. I have to open it in Blender. And when I'm doing these small little progress checks, I just want to kind of get a quick quick slice of where you're at, right? So I want screenshots, not Blender files. And remember, that's the easiest way to do it is Windows Save Screenshot right from Blender. And it saves exactly what you see here. That's the best way. If you need to, take a picture with your phone, submit that. But I want screenshots, not the Blender file itself. So remember that. OK. So um, of course, I've already got the mirror set up for the legs. I want to do a little more modeling on the legs, and then we'll kind of do a quick uh, bit for like the, um, you know, kind of the, uh, the struts, if you will, or the uh, bars for the connecting the headrest to the, the seat. So remember, one of the things we can, of course, do is remember four for object mode, right? Remember, it's one of our quick keys, but it is this object mode up here. Talked about it a lot in review lectures. It's in a bunch of our video recordings, too, that we're posting for our lectures. So remember, there are the modes up here, right? Object mode, edit mode. Remember, object mode is what allows you to switch to different objects. Of course, your outliner has them. You remember, you can, of course, rename them as well, right? So if I want to double click on this in outliner, I can call that, you know, headrest. I could double click on this one and call it seat. And then, of course, we could double click on this one and call it legs. So remember, you can go right in here, and I've mentioned this before as well. You can go right in here and just double click on the name of the object in the outliner, right, to rename it. That way you've got an actual name. Oh, headrest, legs, seat, right? Of course, in object mode, for, for object mode, you could just left click on them in viewport, right? And you see how they kind of get that orange outline to let you know, hey, that object is selected. Now, in this case, remember, we want to actually go into edit mode to actually do more modeling. So we have three quick keys to do that. There's also the menu, right? You can always go to the menu here, edit mode, right? And then you'll see there's vertex, edge, and face right here. But remember, there's quick keys to that. One, two, three. We started doing those as our quizzes, right? Our mini quizzes. Tomorrow's will be, what is, you know, face selection? Three, right? So keep that in mind, right? Uh, it doesn't really matter what, what edit mode you're in, just as long as you're in edit mode. And I want to go to loop cut, right? Remember, it's right down here. We've got the modeling workspace tab up, right? You see, we're just getting to the point of a lot of repeat lecture, right? Even when we do a new lecture, it's a lot of repeat stuff. That's the whole idea is you, we reinforce this, right? We, we practice it. Let me see if they're here really quick. Uh, yes, they are. Okay. Um, can you get that? Can you get that to me? Uh, to um, she's right there in the corner. Um, a more life. That's yours. All right. And um, I can give this to, to Brian a little later because it's he has to be there later. So, all right. Okay. So, um, basically, right? We just want to add some extra edge loops here, and that's loop cut, right? It's right here. There is a cookie for it. Alt C. It's a great cookie for it. But remember, when you're in modeling workspace and you've got edit mode on, you will see these tools right on the side, right? That's part of the great Blender rebuild they did with the 2.8 series, where they actually, quite frankly, made the interface make a lot of sense and uh, made it into a great interface workflow. That's when I started to become a Blender fan. <laughs> loop cut, though, right? Loop cut. And remember, by default, it sticks to the center, right? See how it's kind of sticking in the middle? So you can always just left click to put them in the middle. Remember, you can also just left-click drag to kind of drag that edge loop where you want it to go. In this case, I'll just undo. Remember, Control-Z undoes. 
right? So I just want to get some extra edge loops in here. Remember, at this point, usually the last edge loop you've added is already selected. So you notice how when I loop cut this one in, it's already selected for us, right? It's kind of got that orange kind of uh, highlight for it. I can hit W for move, right? That's up on the board, right? Remember, these, we've already done these mini quizzes. We're going to do them again, right? But it's up on the board, the move tool, right? W for move. Remember, it is in here as a menu option, right? Right there, but W is the move tool for it. Of course, we're using industry compatible, right? That's that option. Edit, preferences, key map, industry compatible. So we're kind of working like you would in Maya, uh, which I very much prefer. Um, and you see, you've got this manipulator up, right? You can grab on any one of these handles, of course, to move it along that axis. So if I want to move it on the green and move it back a little bit, I can. Of course, you can grab these squares, and that'll move it at two at a time, right? It'll move the red and the green at the same time. And remember, if you double left click, right, even if your move tool's on, if you are in edge mode, two for edge mode, right, where it is that button right there, if I double left click, remember, you want to click as quickly as possible, right? You go too slow, and it just ends up being two single clicks. So basically, double left click as fast as you can, right? Double click with left mouse button as fast as you can. And that'll select an edge loop. I can move that back. And that gives us kind of a bit of a bend to these legs. Uh, if I want to, of course, I can go to three for face mode. I can move that face out a little bit. I could left click on that face, move it out a little bit. Remember, left click when you're using industry compatible is your primary um, action, right? It's, it's for selecting. It's for interacting with handles, right? And of course, if I want more detail, we can just go back to loop cut. And I can add another edge loop in there. W for move to move it back. If I want, I can hit E for rotate to rotate it a little bit just to give it a little bit of a more bend there. And I can hit W for move, move it in a little bit. And you see how we're getting a bit of kind of a curve there for this? So remember, this is one of those things you can do, right? Same thing with our legs. In fact, these are legs that we set up pretty much just like our legs on our table, right? We have the mirror on. In modifier stack, so it's properly modify, uh, so it's probably uh, properly giving us symmetry. And then we're just loop cutting to put edge loops in that we can then move, right? Loop cut, left click. Then I'm gonna hit W for move, left click on one of those handles to kind of move it. Sometimes you want to rotate to give it a little bit of a kind of bend, so that it kind of bends to follow the shape. And I think that's fine there, but I'll do an Alt C here again, loop cut on that one. W for move, bring that in a little bit, maybe rotate it a little bit as well, just to kind of give it a bit of a bend. And of course, these can keep being moved, right? I can move this in a little bit if I want to, or just leave it kind of there. Double left click, remember that selects the edge loops. And that will allow you to come in and do more modeling. You see how now we've got a leg that's more dynamic, right? We've got legs that are more interesting and dynamic now. It's not just a straight block, right? Get creative. The whole point is to get you guys exposed and playing with adding loop cuts to add in edge loops that you can then either move the whole edge loop or the edge to shape. Remember, you can move not just a whole edge loop, right? If I just want to move an edge, I could select a single edge and move just that, right? So you don't have to move a whole edge loop. You can move a single face, multiple faces, a single edge. You can move whatever you want. It's just that for us, it makes sense to use the whole edge loop to kind of get this whole bend here. Remember, Q is your quick key for selection tool, right? Q, W, E, R. That's Q for selection, W for move, E for rotate, R for scale. So you can always just turn your regular selection tool on. And in this case, we honestly want to put some bevels on this. So I could double left click, right? Shift, double left click. Remember, double left click really quickly selects an edge loop. Shift adds, right? So we shift double click to select another edge loop. And I keep doing that, right? Shift double left click, shift double left click. Shift double left click, shift double left click. Shift double left click, shift double left click. Remember, there, there is a preference, which I really like. Edit preferences. Uh, 
navigation orbit around selection. I have that checked on. And that way, whatever I have selected, my camera rotate, rotates around that. But there is also frame selection, F, right? That'll actually, uh, whatever you have selected, kind of set up your zoom and camera rotate on it. F for frame selection. With those edges selected, I can go to the bevel tool, right? It's kind of all right here. Extrude, inset, bevel, loop cut. I just click on bevel. Brings up this yellow handle. Now, of course, you can do a middle mouse button for this as well, but kind of teaching you guys for the first time, so sometimes it's easier to just know you can grab on a handle than remember the quick key for it. So we can left click drag on that. And remember that takes that edge and edge loops and it splits them at a 45 degree angle. Now, I let go of that handle and I didn't click it again. That means that this act bevel is still active. I can go into the bevel options down here. Remember the bottom left corner? Bottom left corner, right? Click on that. And the bevel options come up there. And what we can do is we can give more segments right here, right? Segments. Width, of course, can allow us to control the width. But segments gives us a couple more edge loops at each bevel. Now, the moment I hit Q to turn this off, right, that bevel's done. But now we have something more dynamic for our legs, right? Something more dynamic for our legs. But that was nothing new. I've actually done that in several review lectures for you, and you have a video lecture for your table legs. That is identical. It's the same thing. I did not do anything new there. It's just bevels and loop cuts and shaping, right? Selecting edge loops. Things we've talked about multiple times in class, and we're going to keep talking about multiple times in class. The last thing I want to do is maybe start to give ourselves kind of the uh, the um, kind of the um, uh, parts that'll connect the arm, the headrest to the body or the seat. So I'm going to go to four for object mode. Right, four is the cookie for object mode. But remember, there is a button up here. We go to add mesh cube. Once again, this is something we've seen multiple times, right? Multiple times in review lectures, but also just it's in the videos, right? The, the earlier videos for this series. So add mesh cube when you're in object mode. And now we have kind of the start for the posts. Now, at this point, remember, I like to have the center, right? That kind of little candy cane circle. But also, there's a little orange dot. That's kind of your center and your cursor. They're centered on the origin of the 3D world, right? Zero, zero, zero for X, Y, Z. I want to keep that there because I want my mirror to use that, right? So when I create that new cube, you see how it's kind of still got that object select orange wireframe? If I hit three, that'll automatically put me into face mode with everything selected. If, for whatever reason, everything's not selected, go to the Select menu, Select All. We have a Select menu that has a, pretty much all your major selection tools. So with that on, I can hit R for Scale, right? Remember, they're all right here, though. Move, Rotate, Scale, but R is the quick key for it. Remember, Middle Mouse button will actually do this uniform scale, but the white handle will do it, right? So I know sometimes it's a lot to remember there's a lot of quick keys, so... I'm trying to rely a little more on the handles for you guys right now, but middle mouse button does that also. And then, of course, I could left click drag on the blue to kind of make this taller. It's a little too tall now, right? Maybe a little smaller there, a little taller here. W for move, right? And I can move it over on the red. I can move it up on the blue. Move it back on the green. I can even rotate it, right? E for rotate. Left click drag on that red handle. Maybe even on the green, just to give it a bit more of an angle. And you see, we can start to kind of put this into place. Now, of course, we can come back and do more modeling on it. I'm going to hit 4 for object mode, right? But remember, it's right up here. Edit mode and object mode is this pull-down menu. There are great quick keys for this, though, already. 4, right? Now, you could do a, a mere modifier, right? So if you go to the blue wrench, you go to add modifier, you just apply a mirror. But remember, one of the add-on things I showed you the other day, right? Edit, preferences, add-ons. You can go right up here to the magnifying glass, type in mesh, M-E-S-H, and check on auto mirror. 
This comes with Blender. You just need to tell Blender to have it on. When you do, you'll see there's kind of that little V right here pointing to the left. It's kind of right next to the outliner. It's right there where my cursor's at. Click on that. It opens this up. The Edit tab will have Auto Mirror. B surfaces might also be open, so you have to kind of click on these to close or open them. And in this case, it's actually still set up from last time. So usually, once you do an Auto Mirror for the first time, the toggle Edit and Edit will be, uh, edit will be on, right? X, Auto Mirror, and there we go. It's already all set up for us. So Auto Mirror can actually automate that a bit and make it a bit quicker to set up your mirrors. Do you have to use it? No, because you know how to do the regular mirror. We've done that a bunch of times, right? But auto mirror is very cool, and I, I use it primarily for my mirroring stuff most of the time. All right, uh, that'll be a great place to save for today. Stop the recording.